There we are, Double Take with Double R. Great to be back. I always say that, right? Great to be back. By the way, if you're hearing some noise in the background, it's because I'm doing my wash and my drying and all this other stuff. You know, hey, man, when you're a single guy, you got to take care of business, right? You don't want to be wearing your shirts inside out and your underwear inside out and got to wash clothes. That's just the way it is. Uh, but I'm very, very blessed where I have a washer and dryer inside my condo. So I'm good to go. I don't have to go to the washateria. I can remember the days when I go to the washateria. It's embarrassing, man. It really, really was. I remember I'd be folding my clothes, my shirts. I'd be putting them on clothes hangers and stuff. Then i get my underwear, folding them. The third or fourth time I'm folding my underwear, and then I, I felt somebody looking at me. I'm like, eh? <laughs> Two, three girls. <laughs> Those underwear, man, that's pretty small underwear for you, dude. Uh, don't worry about it, right? <laughs> the good old days of going to the Washington Anyways, here we are Thursday weekend, right around the corner, 5.45 p.m., March the 23rd, 2023. 81 degrees happening right now, mostly cloudy skies. Been a funky kind of a week with weather. It really, really has. I have a lot to talk about, man, but I'm going to start off on a... Uh, Sad note, and then we'll move to some other stuff. On a sad note, I was watching the news this morning where they were talking about a motorcyclist here in San Antonio. A 20-year-old young man, 20 years old, was racing around the south side of San Antonio on Flora Street, and lo and behold, got in a wreck. Somebody pulled out in front of him. The guy's already speeding as it is. Somebody pulled out in front of him. He didn't make it. Ran into the car. And there we go. His life is over. All because he had to be speeding, according to what the police officers are saying. You know, um, it just seems that every day or every other day, there's always a new story where a motorcyclist is just there. Uh, um, did I hit the button? I don't even know. Let me see if I hit the button here. I got to make sure I got the button going. Yes, I do. There we go. I got to make sure my little background and everything. But like I said, um... It just seems that every day or every other day, there's a motorcyclist who gets killed because they're speeding, they're doing whatever they're doing. I mean, I understand there are idiots out there, man, that will pull out in front of you, even with cars. A car with a car, somebody pulls out. Got to be careful out there, man. And unfortunately, it, caught this, it cost this young person his life. You know, let me just say this. Back in the 80s, I used to have a motorcycle, a Kawasaki 454. That was a bad mother, man. I used to love going on and going through Brackenbridge Park on a Sunday through downtown. Yeah, 6, 7 o'clock. Everything's nice and mellow. But let me tell you, man, one day, man, some car almost hit me. And the following day, I sold it. I saw it as a sign. I said, you know what? There's a reason why this car didn't hit me. God was on my side the following day, and I went and sold that motorcycle. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Actually, I was going like 20, 25 miles an hour. But it doesn't matter. All it takes is one idiot, and that's that. What's he going to do after he nails you and lays you out? Sorry. That's not going to help me or the writer or whatever the case. You're gone. Sorry is not going to help. But like I said, it doesn't help even more so when there are motorcyclists out there speeding, going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, 100 miles. I've seen them on the highways, man. I just shake my head and I go, pobrecitos, man. Obviously, they have no respect for their lives. Honestly, man, and that's the truth. Well, oh, well, like I said, really, really sad story on uh, this morning when I was seeing the news where they were talking about a 20-year-old man, young man, who got killed while he was speeding through the streets of South Flores on the south side of San Antonio. And some person pulled out, didn't see him, and it, it was just too late. Unfortunate. It really, really is. Let's try to see what the hell I need to talk about here. Let me see here. We're going to go right here. Check this out. Frontier Airlines. You know, I got to tell you, man, doing the Uber thing, I always hear stories about the airlines. This one sucks. That one sucks. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. I'm a Southwest Airlines kind of a guy, but like I said, um, I like Southwest Airlines, but everybody's got their own preferences. Well, Frontier Airlines, there was a woman yesterday who got carried off a Frontier Airlines uh, plane. Why? Because she was starting trouble inside of the plane. She wanted to throw chingasos. She got in a yelling match with another man, and 
I'm going to kill you and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Plane landed. They pulled her out. Full video is on uh, on uh, the YouTube. If you want to look it up, just put Frontier Airlines Miami. There we go. Well, anyway, the woman was arrested. And they post uh, they post uh, the, the mugshot. You know when they put you in there, when they're arresting you? To me, that thought triste. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to call him a mofo. I didn't mean to call him that either. I didn't mean to call Too late, man. I mean, I've been very, very blessed that I've never been on a plane where somebody starts acting crazy and silly and doing all that stuff. Really, man. But it seems that nowadays there's a lot of these crazy stories on the airlines where passengers just... I don't know, man. I don't know what their problem is. Well, anyway, she was arrested, and there you go. I mean, don't they see the news that they're not going to put up with that crap, man? You pull any kind of stunts whatsoever on an airline, they're going to arrest you, and that's the truth, and they arrested her. There you have it. Now, check this out. Crazy story. A drug dealer has been seized by police in Brazil <laughs> after they found he was sleeping on a bed made of more than a hundred bricks of cocaine. Wow! How do you make that bed? How does that work, man, when you get a hundred bricks of cocaine and you go, I'm going to go me, me, right? They say that when they caught him sleeping, he would, you know, some people sleep talk. Talk sleep, sleep talk, right? They talk in their sleep. Well, he was singing in his sleep. He was singing, I'm in the dinero, I'm in the dinero, <laughs> right? A right? hundred bricks of cocaine. Wow! Well, the man was arrested. He was taken to jail, and um, the first thing he complained about was that his cocaine bed was a whole lot more comfortable than the bed in prison. There you have it. So it is what it is. Now, let's see here what else is going on. An elementary school student here in San Antonio, Texas, <laughs> was disciplined and was told to go home. Well, he did go home, but he did it the old-fashioned way. He hitchhiked. <laughs> an elementary kid hitchhiking and he got a ride and he got a ride home there we go now the school district is sparking an investigation why did they let this elementary school student leave who gave him a ride home and so on and so on i can remember i was an elementary school kid i'll never forget one afternoon i went to go visit my girlfriend at the time i'm just gonna give the year 77 so anyways um I needed a ride home. I'll never forget this, man. I got in the middle of the highway. Well, on the side, right? And I was like that. All 70s, right? Put my thumb up right there. No lie. Not even 10 minutes. This car pulls over. And it was a girl. All true, man. She goes, you need a ride? And I go, yes, I do. Well, anyways, I got in the car. And she goes, where are you going? And I said, I'll bend there. A 410 would, would do it. She goes, hey, I'm going that way. And then out of the clear blue, she goes, want a little hit? She was smoking some weed. Went ahead, and I was all chingon. Sure! Do a chingon, right? Smoking a little hit, whatever. I took like two hits, and then I told her, um, is there any way you can stop at Jack in a Box? I'm hungry. I think I can eat maybe about 50 or 60 tacos. She goes, no, I don't have time. I said, all right, just take me home. Well, when, when I finally got home, I was buzzing hard, man. I hit the refrigerator, and I... I got the loaf of bread, bologna, ham, salami, queso, everything. I think I ate at least 50 sandwiches. But, you know, it is just crazy that in today's world, you hardly ever see anybody hitchhiking anymore like you would see them in the 70s. And that's true. That really, really is. Now, check this out. <laughs> Let's get back to some drug dealing. Vietnamese officials arrested four Vietnam Airlines flight attendants. Uh, what's the name of the city? Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. After a flight home from Paris with drugs in their bags, now flight attendants are dealing drugs. Woohoo! Can you imagine being on the plane? Uh, would you like a Coke, sir? No, a beer? Some drugs? <laughs> right? Viagra? Right? Hey, man, what the hell? Well, anyways, four airline flight attendants were arrested. Uh, in Ho Chi Minh City, wherever in the hell that is, uh, on their flight back home from Paris with drugs in their bags. Wow. Man. No wonder, man, when they were 
Every time they get off the plane, they go to the car, they were driving BMWs and Mercedes Benz. They knew something was up. That's right. Now, check this out. <laughs> A woman. Where in the hell did this happen at? In Queensland, Australia. Down on the little shrimp on the barbie. Well, anyways, hey, that's pretty good Australian talk, right? Let's have another shrimp on the barbie. Well, anyways, a woman in Queensland, Australia, made a very unhappy discovery when she went to change her sheets on her bed. And uh, she found a deadly six-foot eastern brown snake in her bed. She yelled. She screamed. She called the cops. Uh, people showed up. And right when they were going to get rid of the snake, she said, you know what? On second thought, leave the snake there and you can take my husband instead. I'm going to have some fun tonight. And there you go. So the snake's okay. The snake has found a new home and a new partner and the husband's in jail. There you go. <laughs> so, man, that's shrewd, isn't it? It really, really is. Um, by the way, this coming Monday, I'll be headed to Las Vegas, Nevada. And the... Casino New York, New York will be my home for the next four days starting on Monday and I come back Thursday. Definitely need to time away, need to get away and it's all going to be happening. I leave Monday morning and I'll be headed to Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll be staying at New York, New York and doing my thing there and everywhere else, walking around, doing some gambling, some drinking and all that other good stuff. Really looking forward to the getaway. I really, really am looking forward to that and um, um I think I went to Vegas like about a year ago, but uh, like I said, it's it's always cool, man. You know, I don't mind going. People tell me, Robert, you don't want to go on the weekend instead. I said, no, any day's the weekend in Las Vegas. Those places are all open 24-7, man. Any day can be a weekend, and that's the truth. So I'll be headed out there this coming Monday, and I'll be back Thursday, and I'll be staying my home away from home, New York, New York. There we go. Now, finally, it's this coming Sunday, Sunday night. I'll be doing, of course, the Cruising Classic Show, and it's going to be open to everybody. I'm going to call it Open House. This Sunday show is going to be available to everybody, not only the subscribers, but everybody. And uh, the spotlight this coming Sunday evening is going to be Michael Jackson. And we're going to put the spotlight on Michael Jackson love songs. All that romantic stuff that Michael Jackson sang is going to be, as the, we're going to be doing double shots of that throughout the night. This coming Sunday night from 7 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. So mark that down on your calendar. You're probably going to Robert, where can I find the link? It's going to be simple. Just go to robertweaversradio.com and click. There's going to be a red button that says click here and you'll be on. That's simple. Like I said, it's going to be available to everybody. It's going to be open house this coming Sunday night. You're probably going, Robert, why are you doing that? Why? Are you? I thought it was a subscriber only, Robert. Uh, because I'll be in a good mood because I'll be going to Vegas the following day. So if I'm in a good mood, I like doing things like that. So there you go. Huh? Can you borrow 20 bucks? I don't get that much in a good mood, but I will open up the doors to the Cruising Classic Show this Sunday. Spotlight, MJ Michael Jackson. I, I know I had something else I needed to say, but it is what it is. Anyways, that's that's it for me, everybody. Um. I'll be posting pictures, and I'll, when I get back from Vegas, I'll be talking about exactly what went down over there. If I made money, if I lost money, whatever the case may be. If I got thrown off of the plane. By the way, on a side note, and this is true, all true. You know, all till I was about uh, maybe 25 or 30 years old, I always wondered, like, if you were on a plane and you had to go use a restroom, I always wondered if there was, you'd go to the restroom, right? I always wondered if there was just a big hole there. You know, you could hear the breeze. Just a big hole. You know, you just go sit on the toilet, but there's just a big hole. And whatever you do, it just comes down, man. <laughs> and they land where they land. Honestly, I'm not playing, man. I always thought that. I always thought they just had a hole there. And whoever goes and sits on there, sits on there. But the very first time I got on a plane... No lie, man. As soon as we got up in the air, I told the stewardess, where's your restroom? She goes, right over there. I said, all right. So I opened the door, and I looked at the toilet. I picked up the lid, and said, there's no hole there. Okay, I was kind of disappointed. Can you imagine being walking down the streets of San Antonio? You're looking at the Alamo. That's beautiful, honey. And then you hear something whistling. Palo, right? <laughs> of 
<laughs> right? Right? Hey, man, what kind of bird was that? Actually, it wasn't a bird. It was a Southwest Airlines plane right over there. Not really, man. That's st stupid and silly. It may it may sound, but it's the truth, man. For a long time, I always thought there was, there was just a hole inside the toilet. You take care of your business, and it falls, and it lands where it lands. Oh, well, I finally figured it out about two weeks ago. That's it for me, everybody. Thank you for joining me on Double Take with Double R. Orale.